Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Well, I thought really long and hard about what I wanted to talk about this week, what with the Pulse anniversary coming up in a few days. And you know, a lot has been already said over the past year, and I'm not really sure I can add very much to that, to be honest. I mean, sure, I have more than a passing connection to the place. Orlando is my home. I don't need a news report to diagram the place for me. I can close my eyes, and I can see the Adonis room, and I can see the patio, and I can see the bars, and I can see the bartenders. I can see the people who went there. It was one of my gay homes here in Orlando, and yeah, I was there just a week before, during gay days. And yes, for me personally, there were people who I photographed on Friday night at my own club and who I photographed almost every Friday night who were gone by Saturday night. But to be honest, I think way too many people have made public displays of their grief about this who weren't even in the same state when it happened. Yes, I know it was a public event and it touched everyone in a certain way, but they weren't there that night and I wasn't there that night. So today I don't want to talk about those things. I want to talk about the year after and how I've become so much more thankful in that year for what I have. How events like these can inspire us to overcome our fears. I've talked about this before, but the one event that probably pushed me forward more than anything to deal with my own gender identity issues and to eventually transition was the death of my father in May of 2010, which doesn't seem like that long ago, but wow, it was already seven years ago. And yes, I think by almost any measure you can say my transition was successful. But despite that, until maybe the last year, I can't say that I was really truly happy yet. Transition does not equal happiness. I mean, six months ago I made a video about how I think about dying every day. But you know, the other day I sat down and I thought to myself, I haven't had those thoughts in quite a while. And then I began to think about why that would be. So many incredible things have happened to me in the last year that it's actually literally ridiculous. My music partner Dev sometimes refers to me as magical and <laughs> I don't know if I'm magical, but I can certainly say that magical things do happen to me. Just before Pulse last year, I met Arielle and she encouraged me to relaunch my channel. But after Pulse, I also thought that I should take it a little more seriously. That I should do it every week and try to reach you guys with a message that I hope you find at least partly educational and inspirational and entertaining. I went to Playlist this year and I met other much larger content creators who inspired me to make my YouTube channel even better. I also met Ebony from Team Two Moms, who has decided to included me in a video for Pride Month about LGBT parents. And of course, I'm gonna include a link to it in the info below because as it happens, that video came out today. Maybe even more importantly, I've met with people who believe in my content and my potential and who have presented me with opportunities that I'd never imagined before. There are so many exciting things coming down the pike, guys, that I can't share with you guys yet, but oh my God, I cannot believe this is happening to me. And I am so grateful for you and thank you so much. And of course, there's my singing, which I shared with you guys a little bit in the past, but something so incredibly exciting happened to me last weekend. Last year during Gay Days at Girls in Wonderland, which is sort of our version of Dinah Shore. At the very last minute, I was asked if I might be interested in singing a little bit. I was asked to only do three or four songs, but the crowd got into it so much that they just let me go on for like 10, 11 songs. <laughs> That was Madison Page who kissed me at the end. I can't say I hated that. <laughs> Anyway, they liked me so much that they decided to ask me and my band back to open for Madison Page this year. And even though I thought nothing could top last year, I was wrong. We came back and something incredibly special happened. The headlining act at House of Blues for Girls in Wonderland was this artist you may know named Stephanie Rice. Now Stephanie Rice came to prominence by starring in The Voice, where she gave this incredibly heartfelt story of how her parents disowned her after she came out to them as a lesbian. And she was amazing, and I'll throw in a few pictures of what that was like, because I happen to be one of the official photographers for that night. <laughs> so on Sunday night, I'm opening for Madison, and out of the corner of my eye, I see this woman walk into the back of the room, and it was Stephanie Rice. And I can say that I was freaking out. I mean, here she was listening to little me, and I thought, oh my God, don't fuck up. So she was standing out there with her girlfriend, and all of a sudden I see her pick up her phone and start recording me, which of course only freaked me out a little more. Then as I was singing Girl Crush by Little Big Town, I saw her walk up like much closer. And when I was done with that song, I told the story which is true by the way of how I sang that song for America's Got Talent but of course they didn't pick me to be on the show so I turned to the audience and I said I guess I don't have talent and then when I looked over at Stephanie she mouthed the words you do and yeah I died I died right there on stage <laughs> So I started stalking her social media to see maybe if she had posted her video of me and this is what I found on her snap story Oh, 
oh my god <laughs> I can't believe that happened and I was like so touched. And so of course I had to share it on my Instagram and I tagged at Steph Rice Music and I thought that was the end of it. However, the other day she decided to reply back to that and say that I sounded amazing. And I can't even describe what it feels like to have an artist of her caliber who has been around these other great artists like Gwen Stefani and Adam Levine and Alicia Keys say that about my singing. I mean, I was so incredibly flattered and it's inspired me to maybe push things forward even further. Despite my fears and doubts of whether I can really do this, I'm going to meet with a few people, let's just say, and see where this takes me. But, you know, I can't even process this. I can't process my last year and these incredible things that have happened to me. And it's all because I took a chance. These magical things are happening because I decided to live my life instead of ending it. Because as my dad's death showed me, and as the tragedy of Pulse reminded me, there are some people out there who will never get that chance. And to be clear, I'm not saying that this is a cure for depression, or that I don't get sad anymore, or that there are not things in my life that I'd like to change. All these things are still true, but I take care of myself, I take my medication, I recognize when I need help, and I go get it. Because you know, transition itself is an act of defiance, but you need to do more than that. You need to be ready to live your life afterwards, and what that means, and what that looks like. We have to believe that we have the power to reshape our reality in our lives in the same way that we've reshaped our bodies. But way too many of us feel stuck in a life they feel that they can't change afterwards, but I don't really think that's true. That maybe in the end what is stopping us actually is our own fears of doing those things that we know can change our lives. There's a quote by Jack Canfield which goes, everything you want is on the other side of fear. And I really and truly believe that and I've tried to live my life that way. But you know, all along the way, there have been these little roadblocks of fear and every once in a while I have felt stuck and depressed. And the only way I found around it is to take a chance because I owe it to my father, I owe it to the Pulse 49, and I owe it to myself. On that note, please like, share, and subscribe, and see you around the interwebs.